Hey everyone, and welcome to this deep dive. We're tackling a book that's honestly been Ooh. kind of blowing my mind. That's a good one. It's called The Beginning of Infinity by David Deutsch. Yeah. And uh, it grapples with some pretty massive questions. Yeah, about, definitely. You know, how we know what we know, mm. how progress really happens, right. and what the concept of infinity even means. It really makes you think. It yeah. does. Yeah. yeah. And it's a, it's a new way. It's a challenging read for sure. It is. But the insights that I've gotten so far have been so worth it. Absolutely. Um, Deutsch has this way of making you rethink assumptions you didn't even know you had. It's true. Like I, I've been highlighting like crazy in this book. I know me too. Yeah. So many like just little sentences. It really gets you thinking. That are so profound. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest takeaways for me so far has been this idea of good explanations. That's a core concept for sure. Deutsch argues that seeking these explanations is the engine of all progress. It's not just about collecting facts. Right. It's about finding explanations that are hard to vary, mm -hmm. that really fit all the evidence that we have. You know, and that's something that we do in so many areas of life not even realizing it. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's not just science. Mm. You think about how we understand history. Right. Or even how we form our own personal beliefs about the world. Yeah. Like we're constantly to find those. looking for explanations that it's, make well, sense of the world around us. Right. And it's like that aha moment. Exactly. You know, when you're finally like. Oh, like something just clicks. Now I get it. It all makes sense. And Deutsch argues that. Like a puzzle piece falling into place. Yeah. And Deutsch argues that good explanations have this incredible power. They really do. Um, they allow us to know about things that we haven't directly experienced. Like, think about it. How do we know what's happening at the core of a star? Yeah. How do we know what the core of a star is like? We can't go there and see for ourselves. Right. We can't experience that. Right. Exactly. Our senses can only take us so far. Yeah. But with the right explanation, mm -hmm. we can reach far beyond our limited experience. Right. And, you know, Deutsch, he uses this great example of the ancient astronomers. I love that example. Figuring out that the Earth is tilted on its axis. Mm -hmm. And that explains why we have seasons. Right. It even allowed them to predict what the seasons would be like in parts of the world they hadn't even explored yet. Yeah, it's like having a mental time machine. It is. They're traveling. Just by understanding the explanation, you can travel to different places and times different places and times just by thinking about it. And there's another benefit to these good explanations, too. There are so many. Right. What else is there? Well, Deutsch argues that they actually make it harder to fool ourselves. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. When you have a solid explanation. Yeah. It becomes more difficult to ignore evidence that doesn't fit. It's harder to just cherry pick. Or to just believe what you want to believe. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to confront the truth. Yeah. So it's like good explanations are a safeguard against bias and wishful thinking. Absolutely. They force us to confront reality even when it's uncomfortable. Right. And that brings us to another oh, go ahead. crucial point that Deutsch makes in the book. Mm -hmm. And that's the role of creativity. Yes. In generating knowledge. So you mean it's not just passively observing the world? It's not just about sitting back and watching. Right. We have to actively engage with it. Right. Come up with new ideas, test them out. Yeah. Deutsch challenges this idea. This is so important. That science is just about predicting things. I know so many people think that. He says prediction is impossible without explanation. Right. You can't predict what's going to happen unless you understand why things happen the way they do. So it all starts with a guess. It does. A conjecture, as Deutsch calls it. Right. And then the really important part. Right. We criticize our guesses. We test them. We see if they hold up. We see if they hold up to scrutiny. Right. And it's this process of exact conjecture and criticism. That's the engine of knowledge creation. That drives the creation of new knowledge. That's how we learn and grow. Yeah. And this reminds me of the scientific revolution. It's a perfect example. It was all about challenging the old ways of thinking overturning dogma coming up with new explanations and testing them against the evidence right it was a moment when humanity realized that knowledge could be created it wasn't just not just received from authority or tradition right and that realization according to deutsch it was huge was the spark that ignited the beginning of infinity and speaking of infinity Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a whole other can of worms. Deutsch spends a good amount of time. He does. He dives deep. Exploring that concept, too. It's a fascinating but challenging concept. Yeah, it always makes my head spin a little bit. I know. It's one of those concepts that really challenges... It does. ...our everyday intuition. Our intuition, yeah. Deutsch 
uses this example of the Infinity Hotel to illustrate this. Oh, yeah. Have you heard of this one? I have, but explain it to everybody else. Okay, so imagine a hotel oh, yeah. with an infinite number of rooms. Right. Infinite rooms. And it's completely full. Every room is taken. Okay, no vacancy. Now a new guest arrives. Oh, what do you do? Well, they're out of luck, right? You would think so, right? Yeah. No vacancy. Right. But not necessarily. Or what? Because the hotel has an infinite number of rooms. You can just shift all the guests down by one room. Oh. And suddenly you have a vacancy for the new guest. Wait, are you telling me I can get a room even if they're fully booked? You can. That doesn't seem fair. It seems counterintuitive, but that's the nature of infinity. That's so weird. It is. And this thought experiment really helps us to understand that there are different types of infinity. Yeah. Some infinities are countable. Like the set of all whole numbers? Exactly. Like one, two, three, four. Yeah. Keeps going forever. Right. But then there are uncountable infinities. Like the set of all real numbers? Right. All the numbers, including decimals, fractions. So there are different levels of infinity. There are. That's mind-blowing. It is. It's a crazy concept. How does this idea apply to the real world, though? Well, think about it. Like, how do we use this? This is what we were talking about before. Okay. With computers, okay. we're constantly trying to capture the infinite complexity of reality right. using finite digital systems. Trying to put an ocean in a teacup. Exactly. And the difference between countable and uncountable infinities right. really highlights the challenges we face in trying to do that. So even in the realm of mathematics and computation, there are limitations. There are. To what we can know. And understanding those limitations is important. It is. Makes you realize. This makes me wonder. What are you wondering? So we left off on a pretty big question last time. <laughs> yeah, the potential downsides of being universal constructors. If humans are capable of creating practically anything, what about the things that could go wrong? It's the flip side. Right. Of infinite potential, right? Yeah. Infinite ways to create. Yeah infinite ways things could go wrong. Exactly. It feels like a... That's a good way to put it. Huge responsibility. It is a lot of power. Yeah. In the hands of fallible beings. We can't just go around building whatever we want... Right. ...without thinking about the consequences. Consequences are key. Right. And that's precisely where Deutsch's emphasis on good explanations becomes even more crucial. It all comes back to those explanations. It does. It's not just about having knowledge. It's mm. about having knowledge that's deeply connected to reality. Right. Knowledge that can help you anticipate problems. And avoid fooling yourself. And avoid fooling yourself, exactly. So it's not just knowing how to build something. Right. But understanding why you're building it and what might happen as a result. The why is just as important as the how. Right. And this requires a certain humility. Yes. You know? We need to acknowledge that our knowledge is always incomplete. Right. That there will always be things we don't know. So true. That's why it's so important to be open to criticism, to constantly be refining our understanding. This reminds me of the dangers of bad philosophy. Oh, yeah. That we talked about earlier. Dogmatism. Right. It can really lead you astray. Getting stuck in a mindset where you think you have all the answers. Thinking you have it all figured out. That's a recipe for disaster. Absolutely. And Deutsch argues that the Enlightenment, with its focus on reason and open debate, yeah, was a huge step towards mitigating that danger. Okay. But even with the best intentions, mm. the most rigorous science, right. can we ever truly predict the long-term impact of what we create? That's the million-dollar question. Yeah, it feels like a gamble. It's tough because the future is inherently unpredictable. Right. Especially when you're talking about knowledge creation. Yeah. Each discovery opens up a whole new set of possibilities. And you just can't foresee all the applications or consequences. So how do we balance this drive mm. to progress, mm. to keep creating, with the need to be responsible? That is the challenge, isn't it? It feels like walking a tightrope. It is a delicate balance. Yeah. Deutsch doesn't shy away from the risks. Mm -hmm. But he also cautions against the paralysis of pessimism. Okay. He says the solution, yeah, what's the solution? is embracing an open-ended future. Okay. Acknowledge the limits of what you know, right. but remain optimistic about the ability to solve problems as they arise. But what about the argument that humanity is already on a path to self-destruction? Oh, yeah. We all heard that one. That our tech is outpacing our wisdom. The robots are going to take over. Right. Scary thought. It can be a scary thought, yeah. but Deutsch actually flips that argument on its head. Okay. He points out that many of the big problems we face, like poverty, disease, environmental damage, 
Yeah. Those are often the result of insufficient knowledge, not too much. So the solution isn't to stop innovating. Not to slam on the brakes, right. but to innovate better. But to Marvel. innovate better with more awareness. With more foresight, with more consideration for the potential consequences. So we need to be constantly learning and adapting, mm -hmm. both as individuals and as a society. Learning is a lifelong journey. Right. Never getting complacent. Complacency is the enemy of progress. This is all starting to connect back to this idea that we are universal constructors. Yes. That Deutsch talks about. A powerful concept. It is. Can you remind me what he means by that? Sure. So Deutsch argues that humans, unlike any other species, right. are capable of creating anything that's not forbidden by the laws of physics, right. given the right knowledge. So if we need something, we don't have to wait for evolution to provide it. We don't have to sit around and hope for a lucky mutation. Right. We can just learn to build it ourselves. Yeah, it can take control of our own destiny. It's like we have this superpower. It is like a superpower. To shape the world around us, to overcome yeah. our limitations, and to constantly push the boundaries of what's possible. And that's the exciting part. It is. It's about recognizing our potential. Yeah, and that's what connects this idea of the universal constructor to the concept of the beginning of infinity. It all ties together. Knowledge creation has no inherent limit. The possibilities are endless. Each discovery opens up new possibilities, yeah. new avenues for exploration, and new challenges to overcome. It's a never-ending journey. It's an amazing, but also daunting idea. It's both exhilarating and a little bit scary. If we have this much power, this much potential to create, mm -hmm. It also means we have the potential to make some pretty big mistakes. That's the other side of the coin. Right. And that leads us to the next part of our deep dive. Oh, yeah. Where we'll explore the implications. What are the implications? Of this universal constructor identity. The responsibility that comes with such immense creative power. Right. Can we handle it? That's the big oh, question. Yeah. Okay. So we're back for the final part of our dive into the beginning of infinity. Back for more. And I have to admit. What's on your mind? This is the question that's been kind of nagging at me this whole time. Okay. What about the stuff we just can't know? Ah, uh, the limits of knowledge. If knowledge is supposed to be this engine mm -hmm. for infinite progress, right? what happens when that engine hits a wall? It's a question that's puzzled philosophers and scientists for centuries. Right, because we've been talking about this amazing potential yeah. of humans as universal constructors we can create anything right but is there a ceiling to that potential mm. are there just questions that are fundamentally unanswerable it's a good question no matter how smart we get yeah are there things that are just beyond our grasp well deutsch doesn't pretend that there are no limits to knowledge of course not as he points out yeah some of those limits are just baked into the laws of physics like the speed of light oh right that's a hard limit so even with the most powerful telescopes mm-hmm there are parts of the universe we can never observe. We'll never see them? Because the light from those places just won't have had time to reach us. The universe is too vast. Right. And even within the parts of the universe we can observe, yeah. there are limits to what we can measure and predict. Quantum theory right. tells us there's a fundamental fuzziness to reality. Oh, at the subatomic level, right. With the smallest scales. Yeah. You can't know both the position and the momentum of a particle. With perfect accuracy. With perfect accuracy. But think. even if we had like a perfect understanding of all the laws of physics. Even then. There would still be this. Inherent uncertainty. Inherent uncertainty. This blurriness at the edges of our knowledge. It's like the universe is playing a cosmic game of hide and seek. Okay. So we've got those limits imposed by physics. Mm -hmm. But what about limits of computation? Oh, yeah. That's a whole other realm of limitations. Deutsch talks about those too. Yeah, he does. And my brain is already starting to hurt thinking about this. I know, it's mind-bending stuff. It is. There are some problems that are just computationally intractable. Meaning? Meaning, even with an infinitely powerful computer, okay. it would take an infinite amount of time to solve them. So even if we had a supercomputer that could crunch numbers at the speed of light, even then, there would still be problems too complex to crack. That's the current thinking. Really? And these limits aren't just about technology. They're baked into the very fabric of math and logic. Give me an example. Well, Gödel's incompleteness theorems okay. show that even in pure mathematics, yeah. there will always be true statements that yeah. can't be proven within a given system. So there are limits to what we can prove. 
There are. Even in math. Even in the realm of pure logic. That's wild. It is. It kind of shakes the foundations of what we think we know. Okay, so this is starting to feel a bit disheartening. Yeah, I can see why you'd feel that way. If there are all these fundamental limits to what we can know, right. does that mean Deutsch's whole vision of infinite progress is just this beautiful dream? Mm -hmm. That's ultimately impossible. It's a fair question. Like, are we chasing after something that we can never actually catch? That's where Deutsch's argument takes a really interesting turn. Okay. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. He says, yes, these limits exist, hmm. but they don't invalidate the idea of infinite progress. Right. They actually point us towards a deeper understanding of what, of what uh, progress actually means. Okay, I don't get it. How do limits lead to a deeper understanding of progress? It seems counterintuitive, right? It does. But Deutsch says that real progress isn't about reaching some final destination, yeah. some ultimate state of perfect knowledge. Okay. It's about constantly refining our understanding. So always striving to know more to get closer to the truth. Exactly. And this process of seeking better explanations that can go on right. forever. Even in the face of those limits. Even with those limits, we can still make progress. This reminds me of how scientific theories evolve over time. Oh, yeah. That's a great analogy. It's rare that we completely throw out an old theory. It's more like building on what came before. We refine it. Mm. We build on it. Yeah. And sometimes we even incorporate it. Into a bigger, more comprehensive framework. Right. Like Newtonian physics. Mm -hmm. It wasn't wrong. Right. It was just incomplete. Right. Einstein just came along and said. Einstein came along and said. Oh, there's more to the story. Here's a deeper understanding. So progress is less like climbing a ladder. Yeah. And more like exploring this vast, ever-expanding landscape. I like that analogy. There may be parts of that landscape that we can never fully chart. Right. We may never have all the answers. But that doesn't mean the journey isn't worthwhile. The journey itself is the reward. Okay. What's still bugging you? There's still one thing nagging at me. Okay. If we can never know everything. Yeah. If there's always more to learn. Always more to discover. Doesn't that mean we'll always be vulnerable? Vulnerable to the unknown. Yeah, like the unknown could always just jump out and surprise us. That's the reality of living in a complex and ever-changing universe. So it's not about eliminating risk. Not about eliminating it entirely. But about learning to manage it. About being prepared to adapt and learn from our mistakes. And that's where the values of the Enlightenment. Reason, critical thinking, open debate. Yeah. Those become even more important. So we need to cultivate a culture. A culture of curiosity. That's comfortable with uncertainty. That embraces the unknown. That encourages questioning. Yep. And challenges to the status quo. Always be willing to question. That values the pursuit of truth, even when it's uncomfortable. That's how we grow. It sounds like Deutsch is calling for a kind of courageous optimism. He is. One that acknowledges our limitations, but doesn't give in to fear or despair. Optimism tempered with realism. Right. So it's not about hoping for the best. It's not enough to just hope. But it's about actively creating the conditions that allow progress to flourish. We have to make it happen. Wow. This whole conversation has been amazing. It's been a great discussion. We've covered so much ground. We have. It honestly feels like I've gained a whole new perspective. A new way of seeing the world. On what it means to be human and this incredible power we have. It is incredible. To shape the world. The power of knowledge. That's it for our deep dive into the beginning of infinity. Hope you enjoyed it. We hope you enjoyed it and that you'll pick up the book and explore these ideas for yourself. There's so much more to discover. And be sure to join us next time for another deep dive into the fascinating world of ideas that are shaping our future. Until then, keep those minds curious. And keep seeking those good explanations.